Tonight, National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich is on the receiving end and could be the first Jubilee Government Cabinet Secretary to leave office through an impeachment by the National Assembly. If a motion by Kiminini Member of Parliament, Didmas Baraza, goes through, Baraza says that he has so far collected over 100 signatures ahead of tabling the motion on the floor of the House next week. An impeachment motion on a Cabinet Secretary requires support from a quarter or at least 90 members of the National Assembly for it to be tabled. But a member's support and objection to the motion is divided, almost in the middle, with those against it terming it an orthodox way of getting rid of the CS in question. But the mover of the motion insists Rotich must be impeached for not just the sugar scandal, but also other gross misconducts. Didmas Baraza opens the big story tonight. Uh, my motion to others is that my motion is supported by a fact that already exists on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a report of, a, of parliament table in the house. You go and check the, the, the reports on land, on Waraka land, you will find that uh, it has indicted uh, uh, the CSRO teach for transferring money, 1.5 billion shillings for purchasing of land that never existed. And uh, before even he, he received uh, a request from the mother ministry, yes, they say that the treasury is a super ministry, but it's a super ministry when, they, when, when, when it does right things. But when it does wrong things, we begin to question their super ministry in courts, and we can only interpret their actions to mean a deliberate uh, attempt to defraud Kenyans over, over billions of shillings. That is 1.5 billion is a lot of money. You remember that a pan paper was sold at 900 million. So meaning that 1.5 billion shillings is, is enough money to even uh, uh, resurrect one of the collapsing sugar companies like Mumia Sugar and Zoya Sugar. It is Wednesday, the 8th day of August 2018. A very good evening and a warm welcome to the program. This is The Big Story. My name is Joseph Ibrahim. Tonight on the show, I shall be speaking to the sponsor of the impeachment motion. That is Kim Inini, Member of Parliament, Didmas Baraza, who is live from our city centre studio. As well as Nyando, Member of Parliament, Jared Okello, who is joining us, or who will be joining us shortly live from the coastal city of Mombasa. But before that, let me cross over live to a lead reporter, Sophia Onuna, who is on standby with Jubilee's Vice Chair, David Muradi. Sophia, good evening. Good evening, Yusuf. So the CS Treasury finds himself under siege tonight. And of course, we'll be hearing more from uh, uh, Moshmiwa Didimus, who is seeking to have him impeached. He says he's at least collected 101 signatures. Remember, uh, Moshmiwa Didimus is a member of the Jubilee Party. Um, and so we want to talk about that, but also remember uh, this report that came from the Joint Committee of Trade and Agriculture, uh, initially at least according to what members have said, saying that this CSs uh, should be held accountable for the acts of omission or commission in as far as the sugar scandal and debacle is concerned. Then you have today the commission or rather the committee of the Senate uh, Public Accounts and Investment Committee also recommending that uh, CS Matiangi be held responsible as well as PS uh, Kip Sang and this is over that uh, Raraka uh, land row. So quite a number of CSs in the Jubilee administration Administration, finding themselves uh, under the spotlight over the various allegations. Let's hear what the Vice Chairman of the Jubilee Party, David Murade, has to say tonight. Um, so you have a Jubilee member who uh, my colleague will be speaking to in a short while, uh, seeking to have C.S. Rotich impeached. What do you have to say about this? And he has 101 signatures already collected. There's absolutely no problem with the Parliament carrying out their oversight role in so far as they can interrogate certain issues that are affecting the general public. But having said that, we believe that it should be the job of the investigative agencies to carry out thorough investigations mm -hmm. into the allegations against uh, cabinet uh, secretaries or PSs. And it is true, the buck stops with the cabinet secretaries and therefore when they say that uh, they have scenes of uh, commission or omission and that they should take responsibility we have no problem with that mm -hmm. but we think that uh, the parliamentary committees are to some extent over reacting 
and it is sad because I remember the last time there was a list tabled against uh, CSs in Parliament by the President. Several CSs were forced to step aside. After investigations and after the court process, all of them, all of them were acquitted uh, by the courts. And therefore, it is prejudicial to the officers uh, when there's a mob lynch uh, mentality. Remember when the scandal in health came up, they also collected more than 140 signatures with a view to impeach uh, health CS, Cecily Kariuki. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, after consultations, they dropped it. Now, what we have concerned with as a party is a situation where the president, who is the appointing authority, nominates, for example, ambassadors and PSs, and we are the majority party in the House, and you're finding some elements within Jubilee Party who are talking about throwing out those names. It is like they have no confidence in the appointing authority. Right. And we are saying the president also appoints CSs. If he's not satisfied with the performance of certain PSs or CSs, it is the prerogative of the head of state yeah. to fire them. Well, let me jump in there because you talk about it should be the investigative organs yeah. going ahead, you know, to investigate, prosecute, present these people in court. But Parliament is also right and within its mandate. For instance, you know, the collection of signatures seeking to impeach a CS, there is due process laid out clearly in law so that they're not acting out of order. They'll follow due process. If something is out, uh, outside the legal premise, it will be challenged in court. So why would Jubilee want to protect these CSs? Not not allow them to go through due process even in parliament that has that oversight role uh, sophie i will tell you the senate for example has no oversight role in terms of the national government their oversight is for the devolved units so for the senate to purport to indict cs's on the basis of some investigation but it would I be argued that already... land is in a county, so that has always been a debate back and forth that... to argue that Senate cannot be involved. Look, we have uh, the audit committees, PAC and PIC, who work on the basis of the reports of the controller and auditor general. Now, what we are saying is that the due process, we have investigative agencies, and in fact, you will find in most of those recommendations they end up asking the investigative agencies to carry out further investigations because Parliament does not have the capacity to carry out further investigations. But they, they have done some in terms of the committees sitting and inviting witnesses and even some of these CSs. When they find hold them responsible, why as Jubilee do you want to come and jump in and which would be seen as interference to say let's protect this person? We are not protecting people. Then let due process we continue are even in Parliament. Saying as a party, mm -hmm. we cannot have members of the Jubilee Party spearheading motions of impeachment. It is tantamount to saying that they have no confidence in the ability of the appointing authority to do the right thing. If the president is satisfied that because the president gets all these reports he gets from all these agencies if he's satisfied that so and so is not up to the task he will fire them just like he hires them but it is, but not is a democracy domain, not a dictatorship it is not in the domain of parliament to tell the president who to hire or who to fire they have their role their oversight role they then make certain recommendations to the investigative agencies those investigative agencies go and do a very thorough job, and if they find culpability, they will take them to court. Now, people are only required to step aside if they have been indicted or if they've been taken to court. We have to have the presumption of innocence. And by the way, if you have been following the recent trend in terms of the investigations, 
the persons who are taking responsibility are not the CSCs or the PSCs. It is the persons who actually did the job, like the procurement officers, like the uh, accountants, the person who issued an LPO or who paid out are the people. If you look at the NYS, those are the people. But the who back, are in court. the backstops, the CS. So I'll ask Agreed. you this. Agreed. I'll ask you this. So would you say an initiative such as this one to impeach, seeking to impeach CS or teach, uh, undermines, in your view, the power of the president when it's peer-headed and supported by members of your party? Is that your position? No, they are questioning his judgment in terms of making those appointments or making those uh, nominations. And we are saying in other democracies, the whip makes sure that if you are the majority, and that is why you are the majority, so that you can carry out the agenda of the government. Even in terms of things like voting, we are now going to demand that uh, voting will be done on, uh, what do you call uh, check off system so that there will be division so that we know who votes which way so that we know if there are some members of our party who are not supporting the party programs, the party agenda we are not about to protect any CS or any PS or anybody who is culpable but we are saying we have to work within the mechanisms of the party and even the party can take disciplinary recommendations and that is why you find the party secretary general is a cs he sits in cabinet he's a cs without portfolio and his job is to be the link between the party the parliament and the cabinet all right so let me ask you this because these members of parliament who are signing on to this represent the people of kenya in different constituencies so in essence have the people saying we feel a certain way about this isn't the president concerned that very uh, there's been outrage even around the rhinos dying cs uh, balala as well was on the spotlight so quite a number of his uh, cs's being seen to err in judgment on the numerous issues so this cabinet reshuffle is it something you think that we've heard about that should happen to regain confidence in kenyans for the president that is speculation and even the president has said it he but is it necessary in light of the issues yes. around the css now in cabinet you cannot dictate to the president as and when he can carry out reshuffles or changes just because there's a, a public uh, outroar. what we are saying is that balala does not transport rhinos there were people who actually were charged with that responsibility. He is the minister, and therefore, yes, he back took responsibility, backstops with him, but the actual persons responsible, including Rotich, he followed a cabinet resolution that sugar should be brought in because of the shortage. And he opened it up, and he has explained himself to parliament where he was going to make sure it is not just the sugar cartels that uh, brought in the sugar. Mm -hmm. Now, the other processes of cabs, of KRA, of making sure the quality standard and they're bringing the right sugar, that had surely nothing to do with rotich. So for people to heap the responsibility for the importation of uh, uh, bad sugar yeah. on uh, Henry rotich is unfair. So finally, we have information that part of those who have signed on to this, uh, you know, move and proposal to impeach the CSRO teach is the whip, uh, who's a majority whip in the National Assembly. So this is who should be whipping things in favor of what works for the Jubilee agenda, but he's whipping to have uh, CSRO teach impeached. Sometimes people have very uh, sectarian uh, interests. Some of these people are from uh, sugar growing areas. Sometimes they become emotionally involved and uh, they avoid reason. And if for one reason or another, and there are several very vested interests in some of these conversations about sugar, for example, and we understand where they're coming from. But for our purposes, if you're a party whip, and you have not gotten the instruction from the party leadership, including the party leader or the deputy party leader, if you're the majority leader in the house, you should take your brief from the party leadership, and that is what you're supposed to whip. 
But to go and sign up to some pieces of paper being circulated by members of parliament, you are the one who is the eyes and ears of the party in the House. All right. So what do you tell Honorable Didymus? He's in studio, he's watching and listening to this. He's the one um, who has le is leading this particular process. What do you tell him and other Jubilee members supporting the same? We want to hear his explanation as to why they would even contemplate uh, impeaching Jubilee CSs because he is a Jubilee member of parliament. There are avenues where people need to go and uh, seek their brief and if they find that they are sufficiently disappointed in the performance of a CS, there are avenues where they can make their presentations known to the appointing authority. But like I said, the party is worried that of late they are even usurping the role of the appointing authority and uh, trying to dictate who can be hired or fired. This is not to say that we are going to stifle uh, their activities, but we are suggesting to them this must be based on some solid evidential fact. And that is why we are saying, and even in the first instance we had suggested, that all this should have gone to the investigative agencies. It is going to them, but committees so of parliament are saying hold these CSs responsible. Isn't that what they're basing this and on? And they are also saying mm -hmm. that there should be further investigations. So I think they're jumping the gun. Okay. They should wait until the further investigations are conclusive yeah. that so-and-so was uh, culpable yeah. in this and this manner. And then they can uh, appeal to the appointing authority yeah. to get rid of them. Before we take it back to studio, the leader of majority in the National Assembly, Aidan Duale, today we saw the ambassadorial um, nominees approved by parliament. But even before Sarah Serem, former SRC boss, appeared for vetting, he made clear in parliament that there was a quote and quote, you know, she's now coming back to us, she thought she'll never come back, almost like a warning of uh, hitting back, of vendetta for all that parliament went through uh, when she was boss. Of course, she's now been approved, but at the time, this was a nominee of the president publicly being opposed by the leader of majority. What do you say to that? And again, the interests of uh, MPs to purport to say that you are not going to approve her on the basis or the strength of the fact that she refused to increase the packs of members of parliament, not on the basis of her qualifications. We had this conversation with the leader of the majority, and I am sure you are aware he was the one responsible for the change of tune among our members of parliament, and that is why, and we are in agreement, any names sent by the president to the house and we are the majority, and he's the leader of the majority. It is his job to make sure, because he sits in on those decisions. His job is to make sure... What those do you make of pass. that, that public opposition at the time? These, these, these are PR games. People talk, and they, when the action comes, like I'm telling you, going forward, we'll be asking and requiring that we do division, so that when we do division, we know who voted where. I would have wished it was contentious, and then we would have asked him to do division, and we see how he voted. All right. Yeah. Many thanks. Vice Chair, Jubilee Thank Party, you. with us tonight on Thank the you. big story, in essence, reading, quote-unquote, the riot act to the members, saying there is a fashion and a manner in which they are required to conduct business. So we'll see how this plays out. Yusuf, back to you. Of course, we'll wait and see how this plays out. Many thanks, Sophia Onuna, for that. Of course, we have Honorable Didmus with us in studio. He's going to tell us whether... He has indeed jumped the gun, as his party deputy chair has mentioned there. But before that, as Baraza hunts for the signatures and evidence to impeach Henry Rochich, which hurdles will his motion have to overcome for it to go through? Let me now take you through a quick look at Article 152, Clause 6 of the Constitution that outlines the procedure of impeaching a cabinet secretary. We're going to get that infographics uh, shortly for you on the screen. There you go. The first bit is a member of uh, parliament, that is the National Assembly, supported by at least one quarter of all members of the Assembly, may propose a motion requiring the President to dismiss a cabinet secretary on the ground of a gross violation of a provision of this constitution or any other law, B, where there are serious reasons for believing that the cabinet secretary has committed a crime under national or international law, and C, for gross misconduct. 
Then Clause 7 says, if a motion under Clause 6 is supported by at least one third of the members of the National Assembly, A, the Assembly shall appoint a select committee comprising 11 of its members to investigate the matter, and B, the select committee shall within 10 days report to the Assembly whether it finds the allegation against the Cabinet Secretary uh, to be uh, substantiated. And then uh, Clause 8 says the Cabinet Secretary has the right to appear and be represented before the Select Committee during its investigations. If the Select Committee reports that it finds the allegations, A, unsubstantiated, no further proceedings shall be taken, or B, substantiated, then the National Assembly shall afford the Cabinet Secretary an opportunity to be heard and to vote whether to approve uh, the resolution requiring the Cabinet Secretary to be dismissed. Over to 10, it says if a resolution under Clause 9B requiring the President to dismiss a Cabinet Secretary is supported by a majority of the members of the National Assembly, then A, the Speaker shall promptly deliver the resolution to the President and B, the President shall dismiss the Cabinet Secretary. Quite a long process there to impeach any Cabinet Secretary that is deemed to have, you know, all those three uh, things that we've mentioned there. Now in studio, once again, I have uh, Honorable Didimus Barazda, the man behind this impeachment motion. He is the member of Kiminini. And joining us all the way from the coastal city of Mombasa is Honorable Jared Okello, is the Nyando member of parliament. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the program. So, Didmus, let me begin with you. Before you take us through why you've decided to, you know, sponsor this motion that will go ahead and impeach uh, the Cabinet Secretary of Treasury, that is Henry Rotich, let me give you a chance to react to what your Vice Chair has just mentioned. This is what he said, quote-unquote, that what you're doing is prejudicial and mob mentality, and it's tantamount to saying you don't have confidence in the President, who also doubles up as a party leader. Your reaction to that? I think uh, first uh, I want to regret and uh, tell Kenyans that uh, the sentiments by the Vice Chair of Jubilee are completely backward. Because I believe that uh, uh, the Jubilee, the role of Jubilee members of parliament in the House is to support the government, deliver on its vision, deliver on the Big Four agenda and the very many issues that affect Kenyans. But it's not to assist uh, cabinet secretaries of, uh, of, of government who are corrupt, who are engaging in a manner that uh, doesn't befit, uh, or rather in a manner that uh, makes public lose money. Mm -hmm. We do not support those kind of, kind of things. So you're, not emotionally, look at the, so you're not emotionally involved in this, as he has mentioned, the fact that you come from the Sugar Belt region? You see, if you look at the, the Constitution, mm -hmm. Article 152, and you have displayed it very clearly, it expresses itself in very plain English that uh, a cabinet secretary can be impeached by a motion sponsored by a member of the National Assembly. Now, with me here, I have two reports of, uh, of, of Parliament, mm -hmm. the report on uh, Ruaraka land and mm -hmm. the report on, uh, on sugar. The report in itself, it has recommended that uh, uh, the CS Rotich uh, mm -hmm. did uh, wrong things and they are even recommended for prosecution and yes. further in investigations. Mm -hmm. Now, the Constitution, when it is explaining the procedure to be followed in uh, impeaching a cabinet secretary, there is no relationship with the such process and the investigating agencies or rather the court proceedings because Parliament is independent. We doesn't conduct our business in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in a relation with uh, what the police are doing, what the, what the courts are doing. We can only use the court proceedings or mm -hmm. the police investigative reports to form part of the evidence to support uh, our, 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 to support the, 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 the impeachment grounds. Mm -hmm. But uh, Parliament has mandate Members of the National Assembly, or all of us, we have the mandate to begin an impeachment process when we feel mm -hmm. that the Cabinet Secretary uh, has uh, actually abused his office 
or he engage he has engaged himself in uh, activities that uh, will make us conclude that he uh, is uh, you know meeting the threshold for for gross misconduct yes and uh, the proceedings yes, of the honorable national Desmas, assembly we're going uh, to committee. we're going to go we're going to go into details of both reports that you've mentioned one on sugar and one on the roraka land but let me bring in honorable jared into this conversation jared you've had the point of view from didmas there first of all are you in support of this impeachment motion and perhaps can you tell us what is the view from uh, the side you're sitting there's the opposition odm what are members of parliament they're saying as well thank you very much my brother and good evening to my colleague and friend didmas but what we have begun to see uh, are a testament of ramifications of the handshake that both President Uhuru Kenyatta and the People's President Dr. Raila Molodinga uh, did meet and swear and signed a memorandum of understanding on the 9th of March. What we can see from what my brother Didmas is uh, gravitating towards mm -hmm. is an intra-jubilee coalition's disagreement that there is one wing that cannot take uh, or receive any advances or any motion or any bill that is presented from the other wing of the Jubilee Coalition. And, uh, you know, in the spirit of inclusivity and in the spirit of cohesion, upon which that most important document was signed by the two key personalities in this country, would then be betrayed at the end of the day. I want to bring you back a little bit, about four months ago, about a month ago, Parliament has had to contend with the two most fundamental swipes by two key people. Number one is the Speaker of the National Assembly. When he said that parliamentary committees that are carrying out re-examination of certain transactions within government agencies have not done a commendable job. Mm -hmm. This sugar matter that is now subject of discussion had to be taken back to the Joint Committee of Agriculture and Trade just because it was believed that what they did was shoddy mm -hmm. and the recommendations that they came up with were not in tandem with the expectations of the body of the entire report. That is number one. Number two, we had a swipe from the people's president when he almost lost his cool on the conduct of various members of parliament sitting in various committees. You heard about members of parliament hugging and laughing with key witnesses who should actually present cogent evidence on certain improprieties committed by various government agencies. Mm -hmm. But a person be appears before a parliamentary committee and receives nothing but you know, co uh, cordial treatment. And the, the platform set for mm -hmm. this kind of witnesses who are so rosy that you really ask yourself, whether we have the capacity and wherewithal mm -hmm. as a committee to present a report on behalf of the Kenyan people under the role of oversight. Yes, well, now, well said, well, well said, Honorable Jared, if you could now. hear me, well said, and of course Didmas is already on record saying that hear. his motion does not depend on the outcome of the, of the sugar probe. Before we take a very short break, I'll need a yes or no answer from you. Are you in support of this impeachment motion? I think I will be in line with what uh, the Jubilee's uh, Vice Chair has said, mm -hmm. that we are turning prejudicial. So this you're not in support? You're not in support? That ought not to have taken at this point in time. I am not in support at this point. Well said. We'll continue with this discussion after this very short break. Of course, to our viewers, this is the big story. We're going to take a very short break. But of course, we're going to come back shortly. Stay with us.